Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, going bowling show. Yeah, going bowling, that's what we were calling here on Ground Football. So, uh, <laughs> got to come up with a tile for it. So, hey, we were talking about the Ground Football Bowl game, so might as well talk about bowling, right? So, we're going bowling, we're talking about colleges going bowling. Well, we're talking about players going bowling, that's well, what we're talking about Well, let's here. talk about something really important to me right now. Um, I want to give a shout out to one of my friends. Um, he didn't, he didn't ask me to do this. He ain't paying me to do this, so this is from the heart. Uh, my buddy Marcus Randall, uh, he is running for District 5 uh, City Council here in Baton Rouge. If you live in District 5 in the Glen Oaks District in Baton Rouge, go out and vote in November for Marcus Randall. He's a, he, 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 if you don't know him like I know him, then you don't know the true Marcus. All you know is the Bluegrass Miracle. The true Marcus cares about people. Um, I, I will say this, I've seen that man for, for the last 10 years go above and beyond for his kids, his players, and the families of those kids and players. So go out and vote for Marcus Randall come, come November. Um, another thing, if you like our videos, make sure you like, share, subscribe at the bottom. Um, it, it, help, it helps our stats going throughout the season and get more viewers and stuff. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. But yeah, we got, we got a lot of good content for the bowl game this year. Oh yeah, yeah, Pause. definitely, Andy. Pause. Bowl game commit posts right now, and Andy, I think this is the uh, furthest we've ever had as far as like getting bowl game commits on our website and got, getting guys involved. So we got over like close to about 30, 40 kids already signed up for the bowl game, and hey, which is crazy, cause crazy. It's crazy because because typically we we have around ten guys about this time, and we yep. don't get 30, 40 until November. Yeah, and it get, it fills up in December, but right now, I mean, it's gonna fill up. It looks like it's before November. Yeah. So if you have so if we've offered you and you ain't signed up yet. We're moving on you to know. round two invites this week. So we'll be sending out a lot of invites coming, mm -hmm. you know, today, tomorrow, next couple yep. of days. Right. Um, to players all over the United States. So if you've not, not, not signed up yet, you might want to do it. Jump on quick. it. Jump right. on it. Because spots are running low right now, especially if you're a skill position player, quarterback, running back. There are receiver. no more spots. There are no more running back spots. There are no more wide yeah. receiver spots at this point. Yeah. So, like, so if you if you were offered, you didn't you didn't sign up yet. It's, it's too late at this point, unless you're talking to one of us. Yeah, yeah, right. As we speak, if you're talking to us right now. Um, so, yeah, last week we had a couple, actually, Division One type players, actually, we talked about last week. I mean, Kyle Johnson's actually committed to play for Houston. We talked about him last week. I mean, Chad Elsey's one of the best running backs in, in the uh, – in the state of Louisiana, talked about him last week, and there's four more guys we want to spotlight here on this episode of going bowling. And then Andy, we're actually going to start off with a uh, my of man, yours. my man, yep. my man from St. Edmunds. Yep, Blake Moran, wide receiver, came to our camp back in uh, what was it June? Yeah, it was one of the late camps. Ran, we had. ran a four, a low four five, a high four four forty. Yeah, a uh, real fast kid, real good kid. Uh, as soon as the camp was over with, we offered him. We offered him at the camp. He, he, he I think, he received two offers within uh, within 24 hours of that of us yeah. offering him uh, back then. Um, so yeah, he, I think it was one of the schools out of West Virginia. Um, but really good kid, uh, big numbers uh, for for a small school. If you don't know, St. Evans is currently undefeated in the state and yeah. won a football. They just beat their arch nemesis for the first time in eight years. I think it is. If don't don't hold me to it, Coach Shriver. But yeah, I believe I think, that's right. I, I think it's like six, seven, eight years, something like mm -hmm. that. But uh, they beat Opelousas Catholic this weekend. Big victory for the for the uh, for the Blue Jays. Uh, Blake Moran's a big part of that team. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's one of the best receivers on the, in the in the in the program. Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, like you said, he had a ph phenomenal camp. He actually posted one of our best shuttle times we ever had, really, at our Ground Football League camp series. And and actually, Alex got a chance to cover that game. Opus was Catholic Sam in last week, and Blake Moran actually had the big he had one catch in the game. But that one catch was the biggest play of the game that led to uh, the game-winning uh, touchdown. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Blake Moran, I mean, he's crafty too, good route runner, got a lot, a lot of speed like you mentioned, Andy. So he is a playmaker, and uh, when he gets the football, he's, he's going to make big plays with it. And uh, he hasn't had a, lot of, a ton of catches, but when he's got those catches, man, He makes good out. use of the opportunity he makes, to get. He does. Gets. He does, absolutely. So Blake Moran, uh, you can read more about him on our website as well, gridironfootballusa.com. So Andy, we make a transition from the receivers and Blake Moran, and we're going to talk about one of the big uglies, right? A uh, position on the offensive line, defensive line, and this hey, is that's where the game is won at, baby. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love coaching D line. Yeah. But yeah. this guy is an offensive lineman, so I mean, not a big ugly. Yeah, yeah. But so this guy, 
big guy, big time prospect, Preston Jones uh, from University Lab High School in Baton Rouge. Another big time prospect. I think we rated him as a four star offensive lineman. Yeah. Uh, he's 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 uh, uh he's compete, committed he's committed to Nichols. Committed, committed to Nichols, mm -hmm. but he's compete he compete he competed in the uh, Under Armour All American mm -hmm. Combine. Uh, big time prospect has great I mean great hands, great foot, great great pad height. Plays really plays extremely good for you high. Oh yeah, I mean he's part of one of the that in terms of like one of the best offensive lines in the state. Yeah, he's part of it. I mean, I think he started since he's a freshman or yeah, a sophomore. Yeah, yeah, a long time. He's been an all-state guy, and uh, Nichols got himself uh, a really good one at that level. And uh, Preston Jones, you can't miss him. He is a big. He's a big boy. I mean, uh, I believe he's around six foot four, two hundred eighty, two hundred ninety pounds around yeah. that he's range. He's 290. two ninety. He did two ninety. Uh, he was in the guard. office for our media day, but yeah, he was. He was. Um, and uh, yeah, he's going to play for the Colonels. Uh, great all. -state State Another player. Division One guy, Division One game. guy in the bowl game. So we already talked about this one. bowl game is going to be is yeah. going to be legit. We talk about that many Division One players in it. Oh, absolutely. Even the guys that aren't, aren't don't have those big D one offers yet. Mm -hmm. You know they're competing against these D one offer guys. That that, that it's pretty it's pretty pretty amazing if you ask me. And what's great about this bowl game is actually going to transition to our next guy we're going to talk about after uh, Preston Jones. You get guys like that. Preston Jones, Kyle Johnson, uh, bigger names, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to play college football. And mm -hmm. you're also going to have guys like the next guy we're going to talk about with, uh, you know, special circumstances that, you know, get an opportunity to play another game and maybe have a chance to play for a smaller college. Um, but this is a special story we're going to talk about and Trevor Ruffner coming up. Yeah, Trevor Ruffner is from Iota High School, from Iota, Louisiana. Uh, he's not the biggest guy. He's about a 5'9", five, 5'10", five, defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. But he's an all-state power lifter. All-state, yep. uh, you know, he, he is a, yep. a all-district uh, defensive tackle. Again, he uses his body to his advantage, so he's not the biggest guy. Yeah. So he's not going to go D1. He's not going FCS. He's not going D1. But he is a, D guy. He is a D2, D3 guy that can play football. Can you? He uses his size to his advantage. Get lower, he gets lower than the big guys. He gets under their pad and able to push him around with his with his lower mm. body strength. Um, you know, you want to tell the story about about this young man? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, Trevor Ruffner went to our league camp just like Blake and then Trevor back in uh, June. Back in June at the same camp at St. Emmon, and this was. Uh, you know, a guy that impressed us because he was athletic. And, you know, he was like jumping yeah. over the three. Was the three? Uh, yeah. When I coach when I coach defensive line, I like to yeah. I, like, I like my my defensive line to be very athletic. So mm -hmm. what I did to that camp, I, I changed things up a little bit because Marcus mm -hmm. wasn't there, so I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I stacked up the bags three high. I yeah. I would, I would want to see how many guys were athletic, you know. Mm -hmm. And so here you are. You got a defensive tackle jumping three bags high. Yeah, you was they clear get, get they clear it all. You know, something that typically only receivers or DBs can do. Yeah. And you got a defensive tackle doing this. You know, really impressed the heck out of me because it shows his athletic ability, not just you know he can move well or, or, or guard well, but or block well, but he can he can move. You know, he can he can actually get up high and use his, his use his. You know his legs. He's he's very powerful, right? And uh, that was part of it. And so then he ran like a four seven four. Yeah, like, like he was moving. And uh, and I later found out he also played fullback, and that's why he gets some of that athleticism, that, that speed. But uh, what what interested us even more about him was that uh, I actually ran into his mom like as we were like getting ready for like the drills or something, mm -hmm. and uh, she told me, "Well, Jay's want to tell you about this situation." Well, Trevor's older brother. Hayden uh, Ruffner was there, and Hayden uh, is actually diagnosed um, as well with osteosarcoma, uh, uh, osteosarcoma, which is a cancer, and uh, he was only given only a couple months to live, basically. Um, so, but he's there. He's he's like supporting his supporting his brother. And uh, he wants to be there for his brother and you know encourage him you know as he goes. Now, didn't they there. start? They started a nonprofit. They have. They started a nonprofit as well, and it's Hayden's Corner. Um, so if you actually go to our website, you can find more about that. It's actually on Trevor's commitment post. But Hayden's Corner. So Hayden gets some some help from some of the local businesses. They actually help pay for the rent for him to do this nonprofit, and all the money 
is uh, going towards uh, St. Jude. So St. Jude Ch Children's Hospital uh, trying to raise enough uh, money awareness in order to help uh, support, you know, a cure for this this disease. And so it's in the it's crowd is in Crow, Louisiana. It's Hayden's Corner. And what Hayden does is that they sell uh, coffee ice cream so if you're around the Crowley area area trying to get some ice cream trying to get some coffee you know we'll snack we'll make sure to go to uh, Hayden's Corner it's a, for a great cause and obviously Hayden's a very uh, inspirational young man because he's doing this because he's suffering this this disease but he's not going to let it defeat him and he's out there to try to help uh, come up with a cure so uh, awesome young man got a chance to talk to him after the camp too and like you know he's living life to the fullest and that's what everybody should to really approach life in that respect so I mean major kudos to this young man and uh, because you know it's, it's tough when you're dealing with something like that but he's making the most of it right right so so make sure you go check out uh, the Trevor's post on the website we updated the website I think last mm -hmm. week or so uh, so now you can go find the information a little bit easier uh, mm -hmm. I was told by my wife and several other people that it's kind of hard to navigate the website. We have that much football oh, content. Oh yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so we went back and we we, uh, we we made it much more simpler. So you have your latest news articles at the very top. The next or the next thing up is the bowl game invites. Yeah. So if you look. Guys. So if you look at if you go to the next the next item down on our website, uh, the, the 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 bowl game commitments. Just click on Trevor's yep. and and it'll pull up his information about the nonprofit. Please, if you find it in your heart, go go take care, help take care of these young people. Absolutely. Well said, Andy. And then, uh, yeah, so Trevor is another guy who's going to be invited to play in a bowl game. And the fourth guy and final guy we're going to talk about, at least for today's show, uh, is from uh, – St. Gabriel at East Riverville. So we're going to Your talk dad about used to coach there, I think. Yeah, my dad was was a head coach there at East Riverville and uh, actually really helped bring that program some new life, some new energy. They won playoff games each and every year he was there. And his last year they went to the core finals, and that's when Coach Joseph took over the next year. They went to the semis. So he definitely brought some new life, new energy to the program. And, uh, and then we got another guy that's uh, actually been a – Really good player. I mean, Justin Hollins mm -hmm. played in the bowl game a couple yep. years ago. My dad coach. Yep. And uh, looks like we're going to have another East Sibberville Tiger play in our bowl game. And uh, it's Theo Dunn. Yeah. Great young man. Uh, very fast. Very shifty athlete. Plays wide receiver. DB. Yep. Um, great both way two way player in the bowl game. I think he's been playing DB if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so so another another exciting player. He's not one of those big name prospects, mm -hmm. but he is a big time playmaker. Yeah, he is about six foot tall, mm -hmm. 180 pounds. So he's your prototypical size. Yeah, he's just not, don't have the looks. Right, right. Coming and, from a small school. Yeah, and he's played multiple positions. He's a guy like we can put him at DB, and he could possibly play there for sure. Um, so defensive back. He could play receiver. He's been all district receiver. He's actually playing running back as well too for uh, East Riverville because you know in the wing, the, uh, the wing right. team they need they need him for that. And uh, what intrigues me the most is that uh, really East Riverville's probably you say best two players. So it's it's him, Theo Dunn, and you got Shantis Brooks, who's the other running back. So, so the Brooks two running Dunn. backs are Brooks and Dunn, like the country uh, <laughs> country band. So like maybe they score a touchdown, it should be a boot scoon boogie touchdown. Maybe that's I guess that's that's what you have to say. A boot I think scoot, I think you're starting something touchdown. for the rest of the season yep. for East Timberville. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That, hey, hey, that's y'all y'all have to take advantage of that. I mean uh, Brooks and Dunn <laughs> in the backfield, boot scoon boogie touchdown I mean, you you want to have to take advantage of that. You know, you might know Enoch will call a game down there. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to. I may have to after us uh, saying about that. But those are another another uh, four outstanding commitments, Andy. And these aren't the only ones. In fact, if you you can go back to our earlier episodes, and uh, we talked about uh, eight, twelve other guys already. And there's going to be more guys. We're going to have another show each week uh, because I like doing a show with you. Yeah, Chase. yeah, me too, me too. It gets a chance for us to do a show together and and I talk. Don't I don't do enough. I don't do any shows, so this is the only show I do here. So <laughs> I don't. I don't like seeing myself on TV. <laughs> but, but we have to talk about it because I mean that's. But 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 the bowl game will be played on December 30th. Yep. It's going to be at Memorial Stadium in Baton Rouge. We're doing all the practices at Lamar Dixon down in Gonzales, Louisiana. Uh, we did get some exciting news today. We did our uh, the IRS graded us on mm -hmm. 501c3 status. Yep. So for any business that wants to sponsor the bowl game, it is a tax deduction now through the uh, our 501c3 status. Uh, get with me or Jace yeah. or Marcus Randall and and talk to us about sponsoring the bowl game. Um, this is game. This is we we have a whole lineup of events. 
uh, that that you will be sponsoring, starting with yep. the the draft, the draft day one, day one on the December, which is 20th. also because the players don't know what team they're going to be on. Right, when the they parents show just start up. calling us up on a week before. <laughs> hey, what, jer- what what color t shirt do I wear? Red or blue? And like, well, we don't know until until the draft, the draft until the twenty seventh. So, I mean, this year I can tell you who's going to win again. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Mark isn't here to defend himself. <laughs> yeah, but, right, but, right. But you see, but 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 yeah. So we have we start off with the draft from day one. We have a, what's called a seven on seven, which is seven former NFL guys will give will talk for seven minutes mm-hmm. about their experiences and how football was used as a tool to better their lives. Yeah. We we invite the entire community to come out to this. This is a big event when you have seven NFL guys talking about this and how how football changed their lives, not just uh, the game itself. It's more than just the game. Mm-hmm. If you ever read any of our articles, it's not so much about the game of football that per se. It's about how football changes lives, how it mm-hmm. affects communities. You know, our mission at the top of our website is changing lives, changing communities. Mm-hmm. We really believe that here because of the amount of impact we've had in so many lives across the state. I've just talked to a mother who her son played in the 2019 All-American Bowl game. That He, he, played, he played high school football at St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. Uh, he went off to play at Lamar University. His, his life was changed, and, and right now he's working on his master's degree in uh, education, mm-hmm. looking to go back and, yep. and possibly be a coach or something uh, uh, after he graduates college. So the, these, the, 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 the impact that this makes is not just the game itself. You right, know, Football right. is just a tool. It's a great game we all love. If you're watching this video, you obviously love football. But, it, but it's like I tell every defensive player I've ever coached before. Playing, playing along the line is like playing, or playing football is like is like the game of life. You know, you're gonna get knocked down. You, the, the the opponent's job is to beat you up every single play. Yeah. To try to win for themselves. Well, that's what life is about. It's about mm-hmm. it's gonna knock you down. You're gonna have times you're gonna get arrested. You're gonna you're gonna do something stupid. You know, you're, you're gonna something's gonna happen, yeah. and you're gonna have to figure out right then and there, do I waller in the in the self pity, or do I stand up? Knock the dust off and keep moving forward. Yeah, you know, in my own life, I've had that happen more than one one time. One time, I'm sure you're like you and yours as well, or, or Tyler back here filming this. <laughs> so that's what we want to cover. How do you take a negative and turn it into a positive? And that's what football is all about. Because in the game, the game, there's no such thing as you. It's not like baseball. You have a perfect game. You know, it's not like yeah. Miller Ryan throwing a. You know, hundred mile hour baseball. Right, right. You know, hundred and fifty times and and and, and shoot down again other game. Right. In football, it, the one that wins is the one that overcomes the other team's mistakes the most, mm-hmm. the fastest and the most. Yeah. So so that's what football is about. So that's what that's what gridiron football is about is about helping these young men change lives, change the communities. Um, so if you if you want to sponsor, you want to be a part of the gridiron football All American Bowl game, contact myself, Jace, or Marcus Randall. We'll help you. Uh, get the right package available for you where you get the most coverage. We're expecting between ten to fifteen thousand people in the stands this year. This year is going to be a big. It's going to be the biggest event yet. We have uh, 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 two junior high games where t- uh, a junior high team from Texas is taking on a junior high team from Louisiana. Well, uh, it's going to be North Louisiana, mm-hmm. and then we have Team Florida taking on Team Louisiana again. Yeah. Two, two Louisiana junior yeah. high teams. But that the second junior high team is, is is South Louisiana, so you you have a chance to to watch two junior high games as well as a senior game. So it's not just yeah. a bowl game, right? It's a, it's a week long event. So get with us and and let's talk let's talk about a uh, uh, sponsorship. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe yep. to all our videos yep. um, and our channels just just to help us out a little bit. They don't cost you nothing, but a click. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> just a second of your time, pretty much. So. Yes. And I hope you guys like our videos. If yeah. you do, let us know in the comments below. I'm Andy Bryce with Good Iron Football. And I'm Jace Lejeune. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next week on another episode of uh, Going Bowling with uh, Andy and Jace.